Welcome back. Today we working on another old project. I'm gonna move house soon, so I'm trying to work up my old project because that actually moved <laughs> several years ago and hasn't been changed. Anyway, it's a Philips PM3310 uh, digital storage scope. Uh, it's a 60 megahertz, but it doesn't do 60. Yeah, probably just 20 or so. It's a TDL grave. Uh, you look here. All full of TTLs and RAMs, everything, discrete components. It worked, off, worked fine, apart it had a funny issue um, when I got it a long time ago. Um, we'll show that later. It was actually a missing solder joint. The, the wire was just wrapped around, was never been soldered. I think that's the reason why I bought it quite cheaply. It probably has never worked. And the other thing is, all the knobs, they look like they went hot one time it's strange these four they look a bit yeah almost like they went hot once anyway but uh, it was working until a couple of years ago when I had a big cloud of smoke in the lab and okay power supply because uh, it's a problem with this Philips they have a habit of dying but it wasn't the issue I have some old footage, I think, very old, it's a bit blurry, uh, but we might be able to put that in afterwards. When well, that came apart quite easy. It looks awful, but it's not a lot actually, I think it's only the capacitor. So, next step will taking that apart and fix it. It was all full of coal basically. This is the mains capacitor, which is just a noise suppressor, and it made the whole board. Everything was black. If you look down here, you can see down here, everything is black. It just exploded. Uh, I think it was a 250 volt capacitor, and uh, having 245 here doesn't really help. Because we're supposed to have 230 volts, but uh, we don't. I regularly see 245. Uh, I think nothing else is actually dead. I checked all the resistors, they look all good. Maybe check the main capacitors for capacity, how they look like. Because this is a bit of a hot area. So once we're there, we'll probably look at that. And the other problem is. The backup battery holder is completely corroded. I wasn't aware that there is a battery inside. It's probably for keeping the settings. Uh, we need to work on that. It sits here normally. And all the gunk dripped on the tube. So let's look at this uh, faulty solder joint here. Turn it around here. One sec. One of these, I can't remember which one. The wire was just wrapped around, but it wasn't soldered. So there was always a problem, because if you if you knocked it, it was working. And uh, then suddenly it stopped working. It's looking quite good, actually. I think it has not a lot of hours. Probably because of that problem. I think it was just sat in the corner. Um, it's always been reliable. The tube is crisp uh, and bright. So was we'll see how it's now uh, I think it's been sitting for at least three years probably longer I just didn't have the time for it uh, but I, I need to work on some of the projects which are taken apart because um, every time you move you lose the screws and things like that it's just a pain in the neck anyway let's fix that power supply issue check the capacitors you know I did a lot of cleaning down here um, and see what we can do. It's a pretty old style switching power supply. I need to check the drawings, but I think it was a 100 nanofarad or 470, I can't remember. So here we can see it, it's C1608, 220 nanofarads. Must be good for at least mains voltage. Uh, it's just a cross the rectifier, it's just an additional mains filtering thing. 
So we cleaned the gunk out a little bit. It's really tough as so. that. But we noticed that the insulation has burned away. It was probably close to the burnt capacitor. There was even some solder here which popped out of the capacitor that goes here at the sensing, the line sensing unit. Uh, we just put a bit of heat shrink over it. Make sure it's not touching anything. Let's do that. So we got it almost back together. Uh, looks alright. I put a cable tie on here. Make sure that's not touching anything. Uh, we put some heat shrink around that. Should be fine. That's a mess inside. We need to look after the battery connector and uh, then we'll power it up and see what happens. Place the fuse because that's obviously blown. Right, let me find the screws for that one. It just goes on in here. Just like so. Alright. Well, we got it all back together. New batteries. Uh, cleaned the battery holder. Put everything on. I don't have the top covers. They are down in the storage. Okay, let's power it up and uh, see what happens. Flashlight ready. Flashlight works. Okay. Ready? I could see. Look at that. It's just a nice scope, is it? <laughs> it's just lovely. Apparently there was something in in memory already. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Apparently that's what it's stored in memory. Uh, I need to... Okay. Alright, so you got both channels clear. Let's just hook up our signal generator here. Let's see. And, uh, let me figure out to get something displayed. I haven't used that for a while and uh, I need to figure out how it works. Well, we just had another cloud of smoke come out and it was rattling and stinking and uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, it was working somehow. Uh, it looks like there was some voltage was a bit low. Um, I just turned it on and messed around with the settings here but uh, yeah it was a uh, funny noise let's pull the plug funny noise and uh, it did it again well it came clearly from down here somewhere I just don't know where it's a different smell this time but there was smoke so we should see some smoke components maybe that mains filter, there's another mains filter down there, maybe that's burned as well, I don't know. It worked for about 10-15 minutes while I was messing around with, with the settings to get it right. But then uh, it was start thinking again. But it didn't stop working, it was just smelling. Alright, let's take the back cover off again. That's the pain you got with the old machinery. You think you fixed it, but you didn't. All right, let's see what we find. Yeah, as expected, it's the mains filter. I don't know if it's visible. See that white gunk here coming out? Because that wasn't there before. Here, this stuff. So this is melting as well. Uh, well, this is uh, interesting. It sits down here, so let's pull it. And because it was a slow, it was a slow process. It's, it just start, started thinking a little bit. Maybe it had one already because of the high current. I don't know. It didn't blow the fuse, and it was still working. Oh, it, there was a lot of smoke coming out here. All right, uh, let's pull that main filter. So here you can see it better. That's that's the gunk which came out. You can see it here. So. Maybe 
maybe it's seen a spike somewhere um, so this got damaged but not completely and the other one exploded quite possible uh, so we need to find one of these uh, the fuse is too amp and uh, yeah we're gonna find something simple issue as always causes something not to work all right uh, yeah look at that it's just massive this thing so much components but it, yeah I had a display but I had to switch it off um, something isn't something wasn't right maybe a few switches dirty it's been sitting for a long time and it was uh, my last lap was a bit damp so I had a lot of issues with other machines as well I'll take lots of issues on the road in Schwarzkopf as well all right um, yeah let me find a main run uh, we'll come back on that well we decided to go the pragmatic way it's actually a wax coated uh, filter and it started leaking because it went hot for some reason um, just a connection block for now because we <laughs> we're gonna get it to work and uh, set it away because I, I need to work on my projects to get them done I just got another delivery from a customer which is uh, they all got the yellow labels with some 240 volt applied to a 10 volt input that's probably not a good idea so we wonder what we're gonna find there uh, yeah I just need some space here so <coughs> to get it going and to get it working for now I know I have some filters somewhere I just don't know as usual they're in some boxes uh, and I'm at the moment I'm rather packing up boxes for the upcoming house move rather than unpacking boxes which are still a lot in my storage uh, so I can't be bothered right now it out I've got a ferrite core on the, the cable anyway because it was a bit noisy that power supply it's a switching power supply on a relatively low switching frequency so it makes a bit of noise but it's not supposed to be used for high frequency stuff because it's only doing 20 megahertz storage or so I think if I need something faster I can still use the 464 which is a faster storage scope um, it's got some neat features actually maybe some of my younger viewers won't know what that is for it's a plot output it's an X and Y analog output and the pen lift so if the trace goes back it lifts the pen of the plotter yeah that was in the days where I didn't have electronics and computers and things like that or at least not that much accessible but uh, that's how it was done in the old days you got an XY plotter and uh, a pen lift output works <coughs> apparently these 33 10s and 11s they had the option of a uh, digital interface which was a serial output I believe and they also I think some of them also had an IEEE output I'm always on the look for a uh, four parts unit for uh, which has the interface because this scope is in quite good condition actually um, because there is one or two cards missing I think one of these empty slots are for the digital interface so it will give you some data output on the I don't know exactly what it's not much but you can remote control it and things like that would be nice it's a huge scope actually compared to the more modern ones but there is a lot of electronics inside anyway uh, let's put all the covers back on I give it a, gave it a little bit of a clean and then try it again see where the smoke comes now so we got it finally working that's the stored one that's this one it's the stored one that's real time so if we change the frequency a little bit and throw that one um, it seems to work we got four memories and yeah it's got some fancy function you can actually move your trigger by divisions so and I've got the illumination on full so we hardly can see the graphical here um, so you can move the picture away and it's all I think it's all real-time stored sampling frequency is 50 megahertz I just checked it in the manual it's quite okay actually for guessing this is made in the 70s or so I don't know where is that old filter 
test it on the old mains filter. It says 1279, so it's quite old actually. Uh, so it's probably made in the 80s, early 80s. Um, yeah, it does the job, it works. I used it for, I only use it for low frequency stuff. And the reason why it chitters a bit, I'm on uh, times 5 magnifier because because you can display so many traces, uh, it splits the screen in 5. So I think the real time part of the scope is 60 megahertz, but the storage is the sampling rate is limited to 50 megahertz. So essentially 20 25 megahertz is absolute maximum if you look at the number of dots if you switch it to dot mode you can see there are not many dots really it's drawing some lines and uh, <coughs> yeah it's uh, one of the first working yeah let's say working digital scopes there's some older ones out there from gold but they are not as good as this one it, i like it actually because it's it's such a crisp display Look at the, look how sharp the display is. It's, you don't see that anymore. Anyway, we got a working scope. We need, still need to find a mains filter on the cover stay downstairs somewhere. And uh, happy so far. Everything seems to work. Well, at least as far as I can check it. I only have a service manual, no instruction manual, so I'm a bit stumped with the save buttons here. I don't know exactly what they do. Here you can see it again. It's this is it went hot at some point. I don't know why. That knob as well. It's just molten. <laughs> anyway, that that's how I got it. Okay, we got that back in working order. Um, good with that. I'm not gonna change any, anything anymore. Uh, just leave it alone for now. Uh, because we got other paint jobs which we need to look for. Anyway, that's it from the Philips PM3310 storage scope, digital storage scope. Um, it wasn't super exciting, but uh, just one of the jobs which were piling up over the years. Maybe of interest for someone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time. <laughs>